<laughs> you miss me. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show with yours truly, Lindy Eldridge. All right. <laughs> and welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show with yours truly, your Chief Happiness Officer, Lindy Eldridge. When we go to different events, we are so blessed and so humbled to be able to meet amazing people. And as I do this, I travel all over the world. And I was at an event last year. It was a woman's event. And I got to spend some time with one of the most amazing women who loves to help people and their families uh, just recalibrate themselves is what I like to say. She loves to help families reunite, to reconnect, fall back into like, fall back into love, and she's a master at it. I've seen her, I've heard her do her work, and I'm thrilled today to have her on my show. She is in Miami, Florida, and this is Eileen Castellano. I might have, I might have pronounced her name wrong, her last name wrong, I'm not sure. We're going to ask her to correct that, but please help me welcome Eileen to our show. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Lindy. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Yes, it is, uh, it is Eileen Castellano. That is correct. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Well, you know, I am just so excited because you and I have so much in common when we want to make the world a better place. And as you and I both know, divorce rates are high, higher than ever. Uh, families are being split up. It's really, it, it's just a horrific thing what's going on. So I love you. I love what you're all about. I love that you're helping families and marriages glue back together. That's something that I'm very, very passionate about. So why don't you just go ahead and share your story with us. Let everybody know who you are, because I already know that you're fabulous, but I want people to know your background, where you came from, why you got involved in what you're doing, and how were you able to help so many people? Thank you, Lindy. I'm so blessed and, and happy to be here. And the fact that we did meet last week, last year at the Women's Prosperity Network event, that was, was magical to, to get to know you. And again, your work is something that really empowers people like myself and people that I serve. And so, yes, as a family therapist, I, I did that work for 17 years, and now I do it um, in the modality of doing of coaching. So I work with clients, whether I work with them individually, whether I work with women, or I work with the families. But more than anything, the most empowering part of my work is to help people go through the different transitions in their life and to have good communication while they're doing it because when we're experiencing something and we're not in a good place, obviously the communication and how we're projecting that communication to our loved ones is not coming from a good place. So whether I was working with um, family court services, I did a lot of work uh, helping more than anything, believe it or not, I was, I was representing the children from their mom and their dads who were not in a good place for them to communicate their needs. And a lot of times what in psychology we call um, the child would be triangle. Um, what that means is that they would triangulate the child. So the child becomes the communicator or the filter for both mom and dad. And so my work has been very rewarding. Number one, because I, I, I teach awareness to the parents of what it is that is going on for the child. And the other aspect of that is that I help the parents if they decide they don't want to be together anymore, they still have these children and this family that they created and they can't just walk away from it or be so angry that they want to destroy the other person that used to be in a relationship. So the first thing that I do in the work, which I, I find to be very empowering, Eileen, is to Eileen, leave my... we got a little bit of an echo. Do you have earbuds? I do. Um, yes. Yeah, let's Let me go do ahead that. and put them on. And while you're, there you go. Thank you so much, because I want to make sure that everybody's receiving this message crisp and clear. 
And I understand exactly what you're saying. And I really want them to understand the benefit, number one, of not using their children as the weapon. And so the aspect of empowering them and reminding them that they created these children from love. And I tell this to the kids and I tell that when I'm sitting down with the family and we're all sitting down together, that is typically my introduction is to remind everybody that these children came out of love and they didn't come out of, of, of a discussion or being in conflict, that they came from a place of, at some point there was a union between mom and dad and the parents and so once i bring that out lindy everybody brings their guard down and so it's so magical to watch that at the end we still have to connect to what we loved about this person when we decided or when we had these children with them and not forget that that is also the aspect that we get to use in order to heal from whatever happened in the marriage and so it's really going back to that place of love and understanding and cooperation. And then we get to start diving into the deep work. But that's the foundation that has to be established first. And that's where I have found that there has been a lot of success for these families. And it was something that I implemented very strongly in my own relationship of many years where there was, um, I was not going through a very positive experience in my own marriage. And imagine that I'm here I am working with families and I'm not in a good place. But I but I, I knew that with the aspect that was gonna be very important to help me through it and my children, my four kids, was to know that the anger, the resentment, the conflict was never gonna get any of us in a good place. And so even leaving the marriage, even though things weren't 100% how I wanted or how he wanted, it still had to come from a place of not wanting to destroy our children or the foundation that we had set up at one point that was a foundation of love and understanding and compassion. I love that. I love everything that you're saying. You know, you and I have a lot in common. I get to also coach yeah. and mentor couples. Mm -hmm. So whether they're together or whether they need to now start co-parenting, step-parenting, mm -hmm. the most important thing is remembering remembering that once upon a time we fell in like when we fell in love and through that process mm -hmm. we created our children and our children yeah. weren't put on this earth as to be a tug of war so i love what you're yeah. saying and it's so funny eileen um you know i am um, unfortunately I, i'm divorced twice but here here's the secret mm -hmm. between what i have learned in my relationships I learned what not to take with me so I don't bring it on to the next relationship. And more importantly, I learned more about compassion. Yes. How do you feel about that? That was one of the most, the hardest aspect of all of it was staying in that place of compassion, Lindy, because it is so easy to get upset with a person for hurting you or for disrupting your peace and your happiness. And for, in my case, there was aggression, there was, um, there was domestic violence. And so there were moments that I wanted to hate him so bad. But I knew that if I did that, then I would just become him when he was, un when he was angry. And I could, I did not want to lose any more than what I had already lost within myself. And I didn't want my kids to see that. So in, in, in that situation, the compassion or holding on to the compassion was very difficult, but it was the one thing that did get me through understanding that he was coming from a place of love too. That's how he knew how to love. And it was through possession. It was through manipulation and control but it just wasn't what was resonating or what was good for me. And, and, and so the compassion helped me heal in order to be able to separate myself and not carry the anger. And like you said, I love that line that you just used. Um, when you go into the next relationship or when you're getting out of a relationship, you wanna just keep what is yours. And so I didn't wanna drag through my life with the anger, the resentment, the aggression, and so the compassion really helped me to be able to leave that in the past and leave that behind and really step into a place of love and understanding and compassion with myself, mm -hmm. which I found was something that not only for, for me, but all of us, it's important that we can all do that, women and men, that we can walk out of our relationships in compassion and in love with who we are 
because if something isn't working for us anymore and we stay, we're conspiring against our against ourselves. So when we get to decide, you know what, it doesn't serve me, then it's in honor of who you really are. And, and again, that's what your children are picking up on is, is that courage and that compassion and understanding for yourself that we get to do for us. And that's how we teach them the power of self-love. Mm, I love that. And the other thing that comes into play is forgiveness. Yes. And, and forgiveness isn't for the other person, it's for you. Mm -hmm. So you don't keep on drinking that poison. So one of the biggest things that I work with with my clients is learning how to forgive. And what I, what I share with my clients is you want to forgive the other person for their weaknesses. And what, however they have treated you, whatever has gone on, it's a weakness. And you want to go ahead and forgive them because people that are hurting will hurt. And the other thing is, is that you don't want your children to be part of this vicious cycle chain that we should stay married because, because we're unhappy, just because of the kids. We want to show the children that we've tried everything that we could possibly try to remend our relationship. But now it's time just to go back and split as friends. But we are both here for you because we are your parents. Absolutely. And forgiveness is very difficult because at first it's the forgiveness towards ourselves. I know I was beating myself up for such a long time because it was, how could this happen to me? How could I allow this to happen to me? I should have known better. I'm a strong woman. I'm educated. I'm a therapist. I know this. How did I allow that to happen to me? And then once I got past that, it was forgiving him. Because like you said, he's not coming from a place of love, understanding and compassion. He's coming from a place of weakness and fear. And so when I was able to separate that and understand that in his mind, and when you talk to, to him, and I'm sure this happens, I've seen it happen with clients. When you talk to the other person, they, they in their mind, in their hearts, they feel like they do love the other person and that they were just acting out of love. And so it's their own misunderstanding of themselves but again, that's their work, right? And so the forgiveness right. aspect is so important for us to forgive ourselves so that then we can also forgive them for, for what has happened in the relationship. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you're teaching your children such valuable lessons in life yes. that they're gonna need to, to take with them in many different relationships, working relationships, friendship relationships, loving relationships, mm -hmm. all these different relationships. So as parents, we wanna make sure that we are doing exactly what we want our children to do as they get older. And one of the other biggest thing is that, you know, I have a book that I published in 2009 called Tears of Fears Behind Closed Doors. It's my journey with domestic violence. But more importantly, it was to help others be stronger, get out of that relationship and not use your children as the pawn because I always say so, this, this, uh, this line, and it's time will either promote you or expose you. Let your children learn who both parents are. They're going to figure it out as they get older. And as long as you didn't do any of the poisoning, anything that was going to interrupt their love for their parents, you are going to be golden. Because as kids get older, you want them to look back and go, you know, my mom, my dad, they never said anything bad about one another. Just because my dad or my mom didn't pay child support, they didn't put that on us. We still got to see our parents. Too many of us are using all of what we're supposed to have from the other party. And if they don't, we're telling them, well, then you're not going to see your kids. That's using your children as a pawn. And I, I, I for one, have never done that. And I'm totally against that. So... So everybody that's listening, when you're going through these hard times and your significant ex other, former other, isn't doing financially or anything else that they said that they were going to do for you, even though it's pertaining to the children, that's between the two adults. Do not use your children and say, well, if you don't pay me child support, if you don't do this, then you're not going to see your kids. You're not playing on a very, um, on a well-balanced playing field. Absolutely, Lindy. And when you're when we're doing that with our kids, 
We're teaching them hatred. We're teaching them how to not be when they grow up. We're teaching them that communicating or having a, a good positive line of communication where we get to have an understanding and negotiate. When we're not doing that within ourselves, we're not teaching our children those skills. And one of the one of the most powerful skills any individual can have to expect success when they're old or older in their careers, and like you said, in relationships, all sorts of relationships, is having good positive communication skills and negotiation skills. And that's something that they get to learn at home. So even at our worst, when we are going through the divorce or post-divorce in these in these cases, it is teaching the children through our own example what we're modeling. That negotiation is something that is always going to get us in a, to a long, to a good place, rather than using the conflict and the throwing at each other and that um, and that animosity, because all of that is just poisoning us, but it's also poisoning our kids, and then they're not going to have good relationships down the road. So, as parents and doing the co-parenting with these parents, it is so predominantly important that they use good communication skills and never make the children the pawn or, or putting the child in the middle of the conflict because there's never going to be a positive result for any of that. Never. Okay, so now let's switch yeah. it. Now I want to help yeah. marriages stay together. I want to help yeah. people fall back into like. I want them to fall yeah. back into love and bring back yeah. the unity. Now, this is a slow process. There's no magic mm -hmm. to it. But if we have two parties, the two people that want to stay together, the number one is that they both have to want it. It can't be one wants it and the other one says, well, we've tried it before. It didn't work, but yeah, come on. We'll try it one more time because she wants to do it or he wants to do it. It has to be an equal level playing field where both parties say, we don't want to lose what we have. So what do we do for that? What do we do for those couples? I love that question. This is the part that I love. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> in order for them to fall in like and fall in love with each other again, it is always recommended for them to go to date nights, is to have a day out of the week that one of them does something nice. So for example, if it's her week this week, then it's his week next week. Just creating something magical, something pretty. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It could be at the park, it could be at the beach, it could be anywhere, it could be in the car. But really choosing a couple of hours where they get to be with each other, not talking about the kids, not talking about finances, not talking about work, but talking about each other. Reminding each other what it is that they fell in love with that has not, that only, not only they fell in love with at the inception, but that has kept them together. Talking about the positives that they see within each other. And that everybody wants to hear good things about each other and everybody wants to tell the other person how good we feel about them because we love making So really reminding each other what, what was the, the foundation of the love initially and how they can begin to work on that again. The rekindling is very important and, and the, the sparking that up again. But like you said, Lindy, they both have to want it because it is work. Because there, there may still be some resentment from something that has happened in the past. And, and the other recommendation that I always give, if there was, for example, any infidelity or there have been issues with the in-laws or anything like that, when once we forgive our partner and we say, okay, we're done, I don't want to talk about that anymore, it really has to be done. It can't be something that you keep pulling out um, every time that you're going to have a conversation or you have an argument, you're going to pull out every single moment that you were upset with this person because that's not forgiveness and that's not going to allow them to propel the relationship forward. Wow, I love it, you know, and when we communicate with each other and we're listening to what one another is saying, sometimes we don't really like what the other one is saying because it's not what we want to hear. So what I try to help people with is pausing. Just yes. because the other person contributed something in the conversation and you didn't like it doesn't mean that you should react immediately. You should pause. You should think about it. You should share with the other person, you know what, I'm going to think about that and then I want to get back together with you. Because during this time of pausing, you're going to replay everything that was said, that was done, and it might just end up that what the person was sharing and what you heard after you paused and you were able to really evaluate it, you're going to realize, oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That's what they meant. And then you could go no. back to them and say, you know, after I thought about it, I believe this is what you meant. Is that true? And then you get to open up the discussion again with more respect. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. I love that you brought that up. Yes. And in the communication, what I think is very important when we're talking communication, it's not just what we're saying, but being a good listener. And so I love that idea that you said about pausing, just step back, kind of, right, analyze or, or reassess what the person might be saying or is saying, but that comes from listening. And so many times we're so ready to jump into the conversation and react and have a reaction to what they're saying that a lot of times we'll cut them off and not even allow them to finish their, their thought or what it is that they're trying to say. And so listening and really having that space that we can honor them for what it is that they're saying and listen and pause is, a, is that's amazing advice. That's awesome advice. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, I'm really just mirroring the things that I've also heard you say. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, there's a duct tape philosophy that I do at all of my speaking engagements, and I give everybody mm -hmm. a piece of duct tape. And <laughs> that is to symbolize, uh, again, the pausing. When you don't like a conversation the way they're going, when two people start to argue, it starts just to become a yelling match. Nobody even hears what they're going to say. So it's my way of helping people have something to remind them to pretend they have duct tape on their mouth and don't interrupt because nobody likes to be interrupted. We want to be heard. We want to be loved. So, I, you know, I just I just love that I even had to train myself. To, we all have to train ourselves to do these things because it's so simple to react. The other thing that I want to bring up, because the walls are so thin in our homes, if you mm -hmm. need to have a discussion about the children, walls have ears. Remember when you used to see the glass mm -hmm. up against the wall? Those are mm -hmm. our children waiting to see which parent they're going to go to, right? What mm -hmm. I would recommend, and if you have another suggestion, I, I would love to hear it, but before you start talking about the children, something happened at school, something happened that was disruptive, they did something in the home, why don't you two go out for a cup of coffee or go sit in the car, someplace where the kids cannot hear this conversation. All they can hear is the solution when both parents come back and sit down with the children together. Not separate, but together, because kids are funny. They're manipulative. They'll mm -hmm. say, well, I'll go ask mom. I'll go ask dad. I heard what dad said. I heard what mom said. I'm going to go speak yeah. to the other one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, they'll do that all the time. And I'm in agreement with you, Lindsay. The conversation should not be had in a place where they're at. First and foremost, it would be important just to step outside and maybe get some fresh air. So whether it's for coffee or in the car or just walking, it's a better place if they can do it outside of the home anyway. And with that said, when they come back as an allied front, they have both had an opportunity to discuss what it is that's going on. And they're both going to be in agreement, hopefully, to be able to give the child whatever uh, recommendations or whatever punishment or teachings or communication. And they're coming in as a joint as, as a group, right? They're coming in as an allied front. And that is always so healthy for the kids because they feel like mom and dad have it together. The moment that mom is saying one thing and the dad is saying something else, now the child, it's really an unconscious thing that we do, but the child is felt in this place where they've got to choose between mom and dad. And as a child, they should never have to pick one over the other. So the allied front, having the communication first, before approaching the children is highly recommended at all times. Absolutely, and come up with the same discipline. Tough love yes. is a must. Tough love yes. is such a must. We are parents first and then friends later. Of course we want our children to love us and to like us, of course we do. However, please remember your parents first and then you'll be their friends. When their kids are 18, 19, 20 and older, when they get older in life, you can become their friends. But right now, when you are raising your children, you need to be the parents and you need to work yes. together. Yes, and that's something that, I, again, I bring that up with parents all the time. They're gonna have plenty of friends. They only have one mom and one dad. So you've gotta take that role very seriously. 
you're not there to be their friends. They've got plenty of those and they come and they go. But the mom and the dad is the structure and the mom and the dad is the foundation. And that's who the children know that they can go to for anything. And we as parents are the closest thing to God or a higher power that, that our kids know. So it's got to come with respect. It's got to come with love and understanding. Absolutely. I wish we had another half hour because I also want to get into the roles of the, the chosen parents, the step parents, but we're running out of time. And all I want to share about that is that as a step parent, as a chosen parent, you've decided to come into the family, realize that there are two biological parents that will always be able to make the decisions once they come to this common ground. And you as the step parent and as the chosen parent, just need to come in and you just need to be supportive of what the decisions that are being made by biological parents. I could speak like that because I'm a biological parent and I was also a step parent. So I, I get both sides. We're going to have to have another show. <laughs> We're going to have to have yes. another show. Absolutely. But How yeah, it's step, step We're parent. running out of time. We got another about another two minutes. Can you share any tips for the, the, the parents that are coming in and playing the role as the step parent? and as the chosen parent, because right away they want to have a voice and their voice needs to be heard, but at a different level. I believe that they should come in more as a confidant to the child. Maybe the child wants to sometimes be able to speak to the, the, the step parent and not as a friend necessarily, but just as another adult in the family without having to go into what their phys, uh, biological parents are telling them. So a lot of times I encourage, if that, that's the relationship that's happening, then I continue to encourage that. But again, it's, I, I believe that as a step parent, not to put that pressure and stress on yourselves because the child already has a mom and a dad, a biological parent that's a mom and a dad. But at that point, you can put your two cents in, but again, I would recommend that you do that with your partner and not to jump in and do that with the child because we don't want to confuse the child or feel like now the step parent is being flexible when maybe mom and dad are not. So we don't, we never want to over um, go over those boundaries that the mom and the dad have set because it's just going to create another situation. Absolutely. Okay, we're running out of time. I know there are many people that are going to want to get a hold of you and speak oh, with you, you. And, and even probably hire you because you're just fabulous with results. How do they get a hold of you? Um, they can, uh, EileenC.com is my website, and there you can schedule a chat. I would love to offer everybody 30 minutes for free. We can talk about anything, any issues, any dilemmas, anything that they're going through right now. I would love a conversation. You can find me again, EileenC.com. That's my website and just um, select a 30 minute free chat. And I'd love to talk to all of you. Thank you. You will be so happy that you went to her, that you could, you, that there's honest help out there with a woman who is absolutely genuine. We never said that life was easy, but we did say that you could be happy. This is your Chief Happiness Officer, Lindy Eldridge, and my guest, Eileen, coming to you from our heart and with love. Take care and get in touch with her. She's good stuff. Thank you. Lots of love to all of you. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you.